Well, good afternoon. Today we're going to talk a little bit about plate turning or turning a wooden plate or platter. Uh, here's one that I finished a while ago and this was glued up out of three pieces. You can see we added a, a accent stripe of walnut in there and uh, and then this was filled with some copper inlays. I had some cracks and whatnot near the uh, defects in this particular board. So those were filled in. So turning a plate can be complex or it can be fairly simple. Over here I've got a a blank of green oak. This is wet so I was keeping it in the plastic bag over here um, and there's moisture in here. This is a fairly new piece of wood and I've already made my recess to mount it on my chuck and I've already cut a circle so this one's ready to go but uh, before we get to that point uh, let me show you what I did to get this mounted so today I've got a smaller piece I've got just a piece of soft maple nothing too big nothing too fancy it's one board I don't need to square it it's rough on both textures all four sides I just cut it to length so I have a square here, and this happens to be uh, seven inches square. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to locate my center point and drill a recess like I did over here. And depending on the size of your chuck, if you're using a chuck, you could also glue a waste block and use a face plate. But the jaws that you have on your chuck, if you're using one, will determine... the size recess that you need to drill. For my chuck, I'm using a one-way chuck with standard jaws and a two and a half inch diameter recess works really well for that. So, there we go. I just connected, found the center by connecting my corners. It doesn't really matter if I have a slightly rectangular piece, that'll still find my center. And now we're gonna head over to the drill press. Okay, here we are set up at the drill press. Again, I said that a two and a half inch Forstner bit, which is what I have installed here, would work really well uh, for my, my chuck, my jaws that are on my chuck. Uh, and I'll show you that in a little bit when we get set up on the lathe. So, uh, I've got my two and a half inch Forstner bit. I'm gonna drill, this isn't a very big plate. It's only about one, a one inch board or a piece of four quarter, if we're talking rough lumber. Um, and I'm going to drill about a quarter of an inch down, so uh, let's go ahead and do that. And there we go. There's my, my recess for my chuck. Uh, if you need more information on using the drill press, go back to the drilling a sanding block video and I can put a description for that or a link to that down in the description uh, for this video. Uh, that'll give you more information on setting up your drill press or a little review if you need it. Okay, so now we have that recess drilled. Now we need to cut a circle over at the bandsaw. Okay, I'm at the bandsaw, and I'm ready to cut my circle, but I just realized that, uh, that I, don't, I don't have a line here to follow. So, I'm going to use my large compass, and from the center point that my Forstner left, right there, I'm going to draw my compass. That's one reason why I like to drill my recess first. You could cut a circle, and then drill your recess but I found that it's kind of awkward to clamp I like to have that square corner to clamp when I'm at the drill press and I like to be sure that my circles are using the same center point so after I drill my recess I'll use the center point then to strike my circle and then I know that those will match there we go See that circle there? Hard to see on rough lumber. 
All right, so let's fire up the bandsaw. I've got my safety glasses on, and I'm going to keep my hands to either side, not in the direct line of the path of the cut. Um, and I'm going to cut this circle nice and smooth. If you leave a lot of bumps around the edge, this is going to be a difficult uh, place to start when I'm over at the lathe roughing out my circle. So I want to keep this nice and smooth if possible. round there's not a couple there's a couple imperfections but it'll do let's go mount it on the lathe all right so we're over at the lathe now I brought our blank with us and we're gonna mount this onto the jaws of this one-way chuck I have the chuck set up on my lathe I'm gonna use my small lathe today uh, this is a 12 inch Rikon lathe uh, it doesn't have variable speed it has has belts up here so if I want to change speed I have to move I have to step the belt over on the pulleys that's the only downside to this lathe that I don't like uh, and they do make a variable speed version now but anyway uh, the, since this is only a seven inch little saucer or small plate dessert plate if you will it'll be good for a few cookies I think later uh, we're gonna go ahead and use this lathe so I've got my chuck mounted. Here's the key for the chuck. It looks like a drill press chuck and that will fit into the hole. And as I turn the key, you'll see these jaws will expand and that's what will grab my piece. So I need to bring them all the way closed. You could also flip this around and you can create a tenon on the back of your piece and then you can grab the tenon inside the jaws. Depends on what you're turning um, and which method would work best for you. So I'm gonna hold my piece. I like to give it a turn and make sure I'm pressing it firmly against the chuck. I'm gonna twist this open and on the other side there's another hole. I like to do both of them just to make sure. There, that's held on there pretty firm. You can also slide the tailstock over especially at this stage when you have a rough piece so I'll bring that over and I can add a little pressure there in the back of my tailstock now that's really not going to come off of there uh, if I have a catch or something so the last thing I have to do to get started is set up my tool rest So here's my banjo, and here is my tool rest for this lathe. So that's going to drop in here, and I'm going to bring that forward, raise it up a bit. Remember, I want my cutting tool at the center point, the center line of my work. So that's going to mean that I have to bring this up a little bit. And I'm going to turn the hand wheel and see, make sure everything's clear. I heard one little scrape in there, so I'm going to back it up just a little bit, about a sixteenth. I'll check it again. There we go. So this is clear. So now when I power up the lathe, there we go. I'm ready to start turning. And what tool should I start with? Yes, a gouge. So I've got a couple tools up here to choose from. And I think I'm going to grab this one right here, which is my, just a, a basic roughing gouge, spindle gouge. And that's got a pretty good sharp edge on it right there. If your gouge is dull, time to sharpen it up before we get started here. All right, so I'm going to start with my gouge, and I'm going to go back over to my lathe here. 
And the first thing I'm going to do is kind of true this up. So any of those bandsaw cuts that didn't get real smooth, if I didn't quite cut a circle, I know I've got a couple spots. Oh, there's one right there. You can see a rough spot right on the edge. So I'm going to round this out. Here we go. stop and we'll check that oh I see there's one little spot there that hasn't uh, hasn't gotten cut yet uh, that's about it just one little spot so we're pretty much round we'll do a little bit more you can see the shavings will start to change when I get round the shavings start to look like a a shaving more so than just sawdust. All right, I think we're good now. We've got that smoothed out. So now I need to adjust my setup, and I'm going to pull my tailstock away for a minute, and I can turn my tool rest, and I'm going to put this on the face of the work here, and I've got to do some mapping out. What do I need to map out? Well, I need to, this is going to be the bottom of my plate this is the bottom right here so I've got this thing reversed you have to think backwards if you look at the bottom of a plate let me go grab that finished one there we are so here's the bottom of our plate so right there so I need to map out this inner recess and then I want to create a space for a foot or a base. Usually this one's a little thin. Usually I do about a half inch, depending on the size of the plate. And so I need to create two lines on the base here. And then I can start my shape. And I'm not going to do anything too fancy on this because I don't have a lot of room. It's only an inch thick. But you can see here, there's a little bit of of curvature on the back so I'll try to re replicate that and then I'll just take a real nice shallow top cut just so my uh, so my cookies don't slide off there later today all right so let's take and let's map out these cuts here on the bottom see if we can move this light over there there we go that's a little better for you guys See, by holding a pencil on my tool rest, I created a ring there. Now let's measure it. Well, that's only about two inches, so that's not going to work. I need to go a little bigger than that. So if I come a quarter inch over, that's going to be a quarter inch on both sides. So that'll make my, my, my base, my recess, two and a half. So that's what I want. It's about a quarter inch bigger. All right, so let's double check our measurement there. Well, that'll work nice. That's two and a half, okay? So now, that inner ring, I'm not gonna use at all. That was a, that was a, a mistake, a test. So now I'm gonna leave about a half of an inch of a foot, my base of my plate. There we go. 
So, there it is. There's the base. So from the outside, I can start my shaping up. And from the inside of that shaded area, I need to cut that out so that I can flip this piece on my chuck. Here we go. to get a little bit of curve in here I'm gonna go ahead and angle my tool rest or I can just turn the whole banjo probably easier to do that as I create this curve I want my tool rest to follow the curve or I'm gonna start getting a really wide space here and that's not very safe see this space right here in the tool rest is getting a little bit wide so I'm going to turn my tool rest as I start to shape this I need to follow my work with my tool rest and I don't have a lot of definition over here uh, where that base is going to protrude so I think I need to take a little more work or a little more material off back here looking pretty good. I've got a nice gentle curve. I've got a little space there for my foot. I'm going to clean that up a little bit with a round nose scraper. There we are right there. There's the grind. Remember that always goes down to the ground. You don't want to be using the round nose upside down. smooth cut that's going to need just a little bit of sanding there so let's go back to work on that that base or the foot 
the recessed area. So we'll come over here just a little bit. And you can see what I've got going here. So now, I come back around I want to take out this intersection here. Remember the shaded part is the base, so I don't want to do much more than maybe a little sanding there. Maybe a very light cut um, with my, my square scraper. Uh, but I want to take out this inner area and I'm going to start with, I think I'll start that with a, a parting tool here. Right, there's my parting tool. I can use that this way on the tool rest or I can turn it over and use it this way. I'm never going to use it flat. It's always up on edge. Okay, and I think I'm going to get rid of my tailstock because that's just going to be in my way here. So we'll take that off. We'll get that down on the floor. If your bed's longer on a bigger lathe, then you've got a lot of room to slide it out of the way, but this is a smaller lathe and I don't have room, so we'll just remove it. Okay. Let's take out that inner area. Again, I want to go about one-fourth, maybe three-sixteenths. This isn't very big, so I don't need a lot of holding power, and I don't need, uh, I don't need a very deep foot here, so or recess to flip it and have my chuck hold it. So about three-sixteenths, one-fourth, something in that neighborhood. that started and I just want to clean that up a little bit and definitely I want to square this corner so that way I can get uh, my chuck a good bite there. I'm going to go ahead and switch. Some people might use a skew. I have a nice square scraper here so it's like the round nose only it's not rounded it's square and this works really good. I like to use this down in the center here okay like that. So now I'm going to cut this back edge nice and square. Uh, I'm actually going to bevel it backwards a little bit. I'm going to use my skew to do that. So here I've got the, the point of my skew chisel. And if I hold it so that the cutting edge is parallel to my recess, then that automatically makes this angle backwards okay and that's going to give uh, like a little dovetail for the jaws of my my chuck to hold on to so let's cut that
so I don't know if you guys can see that or not, but I'm about ready to take this off and flip it around anyway. The only other thing I could do would be to do a little bit of sanding. Let's see, let's take this off for a second. We'll show you guys what I did. Right there, see how this angle goes backwards a little bit? It's not straight in. It's cut backward a little bit. There's a little bit of a bump here on the jaws of my chuck. And that'll grab that very well when I flip it. Okay? So, let me put this back on the way I had it. I like to hold it nice and firm, rotate it. And we should be right back where we were. There we go. Okay, so the only thing I didn't do is I didn't clean up this base part a little bit. So let me go back to my square scraper and drop this down just a little bit. It felt a little high. I should be working right at the center line so that when my tool is on here, this should be right. Oh, I'm a little low there because I can see the, the center of my circle. So I'm going to raise this up just a little bit. There we go. See right there? I'm right at the center point. So when I slide across my tool rest, the top of my cutting edge is right at center. That's where I want it. There we go. I don't want to take much off of there. I just want to clean up that base. My pencil shading, that'll do. Otherwise, I have to cut my, my recess, my foot deeper. I don't want to do that. So, uh, there we go. We're good to do a little bit of sanding. Some people even put the finish on at this point before they reverse it and continue the second half. Whatever you do at this point, if you're going to sand or finish, remember to pull that tool rest out. Get that to the side. Now I'm not going to get my hand caught in here. Uh, let me grab some sandpaper and we'll be right back. Okay, so I've got some sandpaper and I'm going to do a little bit of sanding up. Uh, this is a piece of 120. I don't have anything terribly huge, any defects, any gouges. It should be pretty smooth, especially if you finish with a, a scraper. Some people might say they don't like to scrape, but I do. So uh, I like to use my round nose scraper and I'm going to do a little sanding. <laughs> That's about all I need to do there. That cleaned it up quite a bit. And now I'll switch and I'll do a little bit of work with some 220. Yeah, this soft maple doesn't uh, doesn't take too much to get that sanded up. There's a few scratches in there, but all in all, that looks pretty good. Not a very unique piece of wood, but there we go. There's half of my plate. Now, 
I need to flip my plate and start working on the, the top side or the front side. So there's my chuck key. I'm going to release it and flip it over. Remember I cut that recess and that's going to lock on to my jaws. Again, hold that firmly. I like to hold it in the middle, give it a little turn, make sure there's no sawdust or anything between the jaws and my, my plate. And there we go. It's locked on. I'm ready to turn the front side. I just have to reinstall my tool rest. And we'll be turning in just a minute here. Okay, so I'm ready to turn the top side of my plate now. I've mounted my tool rest. I've secured my my work and I'm going to work from the outside down to the center. That's the safest way uh, to turn. If I'm starting in the center and I'm pulling outward then I could pull this off the chuck because remember that recess isn't very big. Uh, so to be a little bit safer I'm going to work from the outside down to the center, so keep that in mind. The other thing I'm going to do occasionally is check my thickness, but I'm not quite there yet. So let's get started. Let's hollow this out a little bit. Uh, be careful that you don't want to break through in the middle where you have that recess. So I'm going to be very careful there, but I've got quite a bit of material here to remove. Now that we have a lot of that hollowed out, a lot of our waste removed, uh, I want to start to be careful and check my thickness. So to do that, I've got my big calipers here. And whatever, I slide them down. Oh, it looks like I've got about a half inch. I'm reading a half inch here as I check my calipers or check with my calipers and I want to watch that center I've got quite a bit of material left in the center maybe about 5 8 so I've got room to room to shape this a bit more so let's see
You can see I've got just a little bit of my center left there. I'm getting pretty close. Uh, again, I want to stop and check this with calipers fairly frequently so I don't break through in the bottom. So let me check with my calipers here. And it says I have about maybe three-eighths of material. I'm going to see if I can get down into the middle there. And in the middle I still have a good half inch of materials. Okay, so I can, I've got room to work. I'm going to continue to make this a little bit thinner here. space is starting to get pretty big in my tool rest here so I'm going to adjust adjust my tool rest and I'm starting to get a few ridges in my work so I think I want to switch to my round nose scraper and I've got this little one does a good job but this is a fairly I just want a real nice subtle gentle curve so I think I'm going to grab the big brown nose scraper this morning. This one's a little bit wider. It's got more of a profile. Still a scraper. Uh, usually I'll use this on larger bowls, but hey, it works good on this little plate too. I just have to be careful that I don't take off too much material. that took all those ridges out this is a really nice scraper stop and check it with our calipers because my scraper took off quite a bit of material in a hurry and I don't even have to push that one has enough weight to it that it has its own own effort all right so let's see I'm about three-eighths in the middle maybe a quarter of an inch on the edge so, yeah, we're getting down there. I don't want to get take too much more off.
I'm really happy with that last cut. I think I'm going to call it good right there. Uh, this is a thickness that I can live with. It's not a very giant plate here. Just a nice, nice dessert plate. Like I said, I'll try to find something to put on this later. All right, so I moved my tool rest out of the way, and now. I want to do a little bit of sanding. I'll go back to my sandpaper. Uh, first, I'll do a little bit of 120, and then I'll do some of that two, 220. Now a little bit of finish on this side. Remember we put a little bit on the back. I think I would do probably another coat or two. Okay, so here we are. Here's our finished plate along with the ones that we started with. Right, This is one I showed you. And here was the piece of soft maple, that rough board. Turn it into a nice little plate in just a few moments of time. So I hope you've enjoyed the process. Again, uh, happy turning. You can turn plates out of whatever scraps you got. You can glue them all together like a cutting board and turn plates. Little platters. Sometimes you end up with some really cool stuff. All right. Thanks for joining me. We'll see you next time. Stay safe in the wood shop.